Folks, Matt here from Crypto News. We are at Blockchain Expo 2020 and we have Tone Vase with us today. Tone, a couple questions to kick things off. How are Bitcoin narratives changing and how Bitcoin might be viewed in two to three years in the longer term? Bitcoin narratives are not changing that much. Bitcoin continues to be demonized by both the political class and also continue to be downplayed by the entire crypto industry. Uh, so, but Bitcoin will continue to prevail because it is the most stable, most decentralized, most secure protocol in the digital space. And how are these trends, these narratives being affected by various trends in the crypto space, such as DeFi and NFTs, which we've really seen blow up in the last couple of months? To me, DeFi and NFTs are just a reincarnation of 2017. I have not seen any real technological innovation or any real long-term substance in neither DeFi nor NFTs. I don't find them to be decentralized. I don't find them to be innovative. Uh, Bitcoin was an innovation for true digital scarcity. You can't have infinite number of digital scarcities. It doesn't actually make sense. So while they are fun for this bull run, uh, when the bear, Bitcoin bear market eventually comes and Bitcoin takes a 50-60% nosedive, uh, this other stuff is going to fall 90-95% and will probably never recover, just like 98% of the 2017 ICOs. How do you think this next Bitcoin bear market will look like compared to the one in 2017? It, I don't think it's going to be as long nor as deep. Now, that view could change if we start to go exponentially higher on the price of Bitcoin. So as long as Bitcoin continues this slow and steady rise, and Bitcoin has been rising slow and steady. Uh, it went up a little bit too fast at the end of 2020, uh, after the big crash in early 2020, but we're at the same price now as we were back in April. So it hasn't gone up that much yet. So if Bitcoin stays under, 150, 200,000 over the next 12 to 16 months, that's a slow and steady rise. And a slow and steady rise should not have a catastrophic fall. So Bitcoin will probably be rising for another year to two years, and they will probably be declining for about a year after that, but it's not gonna crash all that hard. But this slow and steady decline could really hurt the altcoin space, the DeFi space, the NFT space, because eventually someone will stop paying $8 million for a picture of a monkey. Digitally created and recreated. Bang on there. In your opinion, how has El Salvador done with the Bitcoin experiment as of so far and what advice would you give to the president? Wow, so when the news broke, I didn't think it would be as important as it actually is at first. And then I thought that maybe the way he did it was a bit of a mistake. Personally, I would have preferred the country putting a fraction of their nation's wealth into Bitcoin and not trying to push Bitcoin onto the citizens. Create wealth for the nation and then the president uses that wealth to better the people. But he went straight for legal tender, which at first seems challenging for the population to understand the new currency. Uh, people are demonizing it as now everyone has to accept Bitcoin. Uh, they're helping it. But when it's all, when it's all said and done and the smoke cleared, it's absolutely incredible. I can now go to any country in the world and freely talk about Bitcoin because if anyone questions it, I can say, really, I'm not allowed to talk about the national currency of El Salvador? How is that different from the national currency of India or China? So it makes it so much easier. It has given Bitcoin amazing attention and other countries are now paying attention. I think by the end of the decade, most, if not all of Latin America is going to be using Bitcoin. It will make it easier 
for commerce between countries and not nation. They're going to see how many entrepreneurs are going to be moving to El Salvador. The El Salvador conference is happening right now, this week. Um, I wasn't able to make it there, but I, it's on my list to go there this year. Uh, so it's absolutely incredible. I'm very happy that they did it, even though it's definitely scary. And I thought it could have led down a bad, rough path. But the president has stuck to his guns and has navigated it flawlessly. Bitcoin is legal tender. You think it's going to take place in South America over the next year. Any other countries or continents that will follow suit over the next two to three years? I really think that Latin America and Africa are the only potential for this. I do not see the West embracing Bitcoin. The West is going into the completely opposite direction. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, United States, all of Europe, they're going into the opposite direction. I don't want to get too political, but when I was 10 years old, my family fled communist Russia uh, for America. And after 30 years of being an American citizen, I am now not happy with where we are. And I am looking towards Africa, I am looking towards Latin America, I'm looking towards the UAE, which is where we're speaking right now. Uh, prior to the whole COVID situation, I loved Singapore, I loved Hong Kong. I don't think I'll ever be in those countries again. Uh, it's all happening in the UAE. I think it's all gonna be happening in Africa and Latin America. For individual countries, Paraguay has potential, Argentina has potential, Brazil has potential, mostly because of its uh, very progressive president. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Mass adoption. What are the main challenges for Bitcoin mass adoption right now? Just uh, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I have no fear, no uncertainty, and no doubt about the future of Bitcoin. I believe it will be the global reserve currency. Maybe needs another 10 years to get there. And uh, the biggest challenge, as it was in my very first article, maybe my second article I've ever written about uh, Bitcoin and crypto in 2014 was the biggest threat to Bitcoin is misinformation. And that is still today the biggest threat to mass adoption is misinformation. Ethereum, how do you think the upcoming Ethereum upgrades might affect BTZ, BTC positions as an investment in store value? I think it can only help. Uh, I'm still waiting for Ethereum to finally technologically implode. It is an unscalable technology. Uh, it is not decentralized and they are making it less decentralized by removing mining. And um, I just, I'm dumbfounded as to how Ethereum was managed to survive for so long. And I know a lot of people refer to me as like the Peter Schiff of the crypto space or the Noriel Rubini, the difference, or Paul Krugman, the difference between me and them is that I actually understand the underlying technology because I was around before Ethereum was even created. So I understand exactly what Ethereum is, why it was created, what it does, and it makes absolutely no sense and it has no reason to exist into the future. Anything that Ethereum can offer, Bitcoin can offer as well. It just took a little longer to get there because if Ethereum implodes, goes belly up, and the value of Ethereum goes to zero, Vitalik will just send a text message saying, I'm sorry for your loss, guys. I'll try better next time. Bitcoin doesn't have that ability. Bitcoin cannot fail. It is actually important to civilization. Ethereum, eh, just another app on your phone. What role might Bitcoin play in the DeFi and NFT space? If DeFi and the NFT space does survive into the future, and there is a small percent chance that it will, but it can, it will eventually all be anchored into Bitcoin. Right now, all of these NFTs are recorded on some guy's website. And if he forgets to pay his domain bill, there will be absolutely no record of set NFT. They all say how they're anchored into the blockchain. They're not. It's somebody's Excel spreadsheet um, on a domain site. So there's absolutely no technological certainty in any of these projects. 
none of the DeFi, none of the NFTs, unless they're anchored into Bitcoin. If they are anchored into Bitcoin, we can at least then move the conversation into talking about the merits of the NFT and uh, not have it be a laughing stock that is just on someone's web server. Uh, and those that understand how this stuff actually functions technologically and what was the actual innovation of Bitcoin proof of work mining is the only way to understand how none of these NFTs are actually technologically secure. They can't be. Only Bitcoin is technologically secure. Everything else is just around until some hacker proves that it's irrelevant. Tone, let's take a step into the hot take factory. I want some BTC price predictions for Jan 1st, 2022 and Jan 1st, 2023. So Jan 1st, 2022, I'm thinking somewhere around 90, 92,000 dollars. And tw Jan 1st, 2023. I think it will be somewhere around 125,000 but after it has made a top above 150. And last but not least, I'd love if you could show our fans the watch. That is absolutely incredible. Where did you get that bad boy and where can I get one? So these bad boys were originally created in 2015 and uh, they're an NFT. You can see it printed right there on the watch, yep, one out of 200. Wow. Uh, this is as good of an NFT as anything you'll buy in the digital form uh, because NFTs, only have one thing that makes it an, an NFT, the reputation of the creator of the NFT. So the reputation of the watch creator is printed right there on the watch as to which number out of a number it is. Once he sells out, he comes up with a new design until he sells that out. He's already sold three different, slightly different designs and working on a fourth. What you're looking for is a website called Cryptomatic Dot io or google bitcoin watch and they're not expensive they're only about 800 dollars but he only accepts bitcoin so you'll have to live with that decision the rest of your life tone thanks a lot appreciate your time all the best thank you